in part one of this series, we looked at NVIDIA's upcoming inference accelerator, which will likely launch with their ARM-based client Windows PCs next year, an accelerator that is aimed at executing AI workloads at greater speeds and with much better efficiency than GPUs. In part two, we will look at how NVIDIA plans to take over the PC market with this accelerator at the core of their PC products. It turns out that NVIDIA has a key advantage that is going to be difficult for Intel, AMD and Qualcomm to match. This video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you pay full price for a Windows 11 key, you are wasting your money. Instead, you can get a Windows 11 OEM key from URCDKeys.com for just over $29 or even lower at $21.86 if you use my coupon code C25 at checkout. All URCDKeys product keys are on sale right now, so don't miss the Super Spring sale. Follow the link below to the Windows 11 page at urcdkeys.com. Click purchase, enter your C25 discount code. You can pay with a credit card or PayPal and then just add the Windows key to your Windows activation settings and you're done. The code is sent to you within minutes, by the way. You can also use my C25 code on other products. So if you need Office 2019, make sure to get it from urcdkeys.com for a much lower price than retail. Check the exclusive links in the video description to get your cheap OEM Windows or Office keys to Today from urcdkeys.com. If you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend you do as I go through what makes this accelerator so important for NVIDIA's future products. With Qualcomm and Microsoft investing heavily in ARM-based AI PCs, and with AMD and Intel eventually joining the new trend with their x86 counterparts, NVIDIA remains as the only PC company that doesn't actually have their own full-stack PCs, apart from GeForce-partnered laptops from OEMs. Well, as I've been saying for over a year now, NVIDIA will be launching their own ARM SoCs and their own line of PCs. The latest rumors suggest that NVIDIA will be partnering with MediaTek for a first-generation SoC, but I anticipate that the following generations will use NVIDIA's in-house SoCs, a cautious strategy similar to how Apple tackled the transition from x86 to ARM Silicon. Now, you might be wondering if Qualcomm, AMD, and Intel are coming to market well ahead of NVIDIA with AI PCs, won't the green team be at a massive disadvantage coming out with their own only next year? Well, yes and no. On the one hand, both AMD and Intel have an established name, particularly when it comes to Office PCs, and Qualcomm is getting Copilot Plus exclusivity at launch, so NVIDIA was always going to have an uphill battle there. But I think NVIDIA does have the best software platform for AI and will have the verticals to make use of hardware in a much more sophisticated way compared to the incumbents. Also, this expected PC refresh won't happen overnight, so I think Nvidia will be well within the window of opportunity for what will essentially be a new market. And I say new market because this wave of AI PCs certainly reminds me of the previous drivers for a faster than normal PC refresh, like the transition from DOS to Windows, the advent of multimedia-capable PCs, the introduction of laptops, the advent of the internet, and I'd say recently, at least on the enterprise, the transition from traditional clunky laptops to touch-based thin and lights. These so-called AI PCs definitely have the potential to represent the next rush to upgrade. Looking first at possible product lines and implementations of NVIDIA's Inference Accelerator, in part one, I talked about the possible ones based on NVIDIA's patents. So that would be a discrete PCIe card, which you could add to your system. And that would be awesome, of course, but highly unlikely. A second implementation could be as integrated into a mobile SoC, either as fixed function inside a MediaTek chip. So something co-developed by both companies, or 
or as a chiplet that would be packaged as part of the SOP, assuming the MediaTek partnership is real. Another possible implementation would be as part of Rubin, which is the microarchitecture launching after Blackwell. In this scenario, a typical NVIDIA AI PC would launch with a MediaTek CPU and a separate NVIDIA GPU, with the latter including the inference accelerator to handle most of the AI local processing. So this last implementation seems the most likely to me, with NVIDIA following that up with their own SOC, or System on Package with a CPU plus GPU plus accelerator all developed in-house. I suspect that the first wave of NVIDIA PCs will come in the form of third-party developed machines. So that's your Acer, Lenovo, Dell, etc. But I imagine that NVIDIA will have their own laptops and possibly another Shield tablet, similar to how Microsoft have their own line of Surface devices which serve as a reference display of their Windows integration. Now, the key ingredient that I think sets NVIDIA apart from the incumbents is all the verticals that NVIDIA already have in their CUDA ecosystem, with pre-trained AI models that are packaged and optimized to run in the existing CUDA installed base, and will of course be optimized to run on NVIDIA's own AI PCs. And that means that instead of supporting only Microsoft's Copilot Plus, NVIDIA will have their own models and apps for generative AI inference. This is what NVIDIA calls NVIDIA NIM, so NVIDIA Inference Models. At Computex, Jensen talked about these key models like speech, digital human, computer vision, language, etc., which will allow not only for developers to create new apps for NVIDIA's PCs, but also for the models to be personalized to you as a user. For example, the PC could scan all of your photos and train a model of your face so that you can create professional photos for your business or for applying to jobs or whatever scenario that requires photos of yourself, a local language model could also adapt to your accent, maybe even my weird accent, and way of speaking another language that is important for your work, so that when you do calls or make YouTube videos, it can translate what you say and what you hear in a more personalized and accurate way. And as of course image creation, and especially video creation, which I think will be much bigger than people realize, and extremely useful to a lot of businesses. And I can see Nvidia doing that better than anyone else out there. And then you have multi-model applications, like creating animated characters to add to games, where you can combine image, 3D, audio and animation to generate, say, your own character for the next GTA game or some other AAA franchise, which will then, of course, require an NVIDIA GPU with exclusive features to work, a win-win situation for NVIDIA for both inference and graphics processing products. If all this sounds far-fetched, well, NVIDIA has already shown some of these things at the Dell Technologies World Conference last month in Las Vegas. In this slide, you can see how Dell will be using NVIDIA to deliver this inference strategy to enterprise consumers. In my previous life, I worked with companies that would buy these laptops by the thousands to give to employees, particularly from Dell, and would refresh them whenever there was a feature that was deemed important enough to improve productivity. I remember when touch screen laptops first came to market, the existing machines, which were perfectly capable, were all replaced with new touchscreen ones, because employees could supposedly be more productively by taking notes on screen, or quickly create flowcharts and information architecture. I imagine it will be an easy sell to have current devices being replaced by AI machines based on the promise of improved productivity in things like generating slide presentations and graphs and whatnot. I don't think we're there yet with the current Copilot Plus implementation, but the potential is undeniably there. An interesting detail is how Dell plans to incorporate Omniverse into this ecosystem, which would allow users to do live collaborations on complex 3D projects, for instance, or in visual media like graphic design or logo design or video production. For instance, let's say you are a freelance animator and video creator making an ad campaign for a digital agency, who has in turn been hired by some big-name brand. As a freelancer, you can iterate on your work by showing it to the 
agency's creative director for feedback, and he might even be in a different continent. Using Omniverse from his Dell PC, he can do live suggestions to your project, changing colors, adding elements, removing others, as a general sketch of the changes he would like you to make. Some of these elements the creative director might even generate on the fly, using NVIDIA NIMS generative models. So instead of just giving you verbal instructions, which could be misinterpreted or require several iterations to get right, he can just directly make general concept changes to your project file, leaving you to do the refinement work later. And you can even use the elements he generated right there and then as the baseline for your more in-depth work as a freelancer. That's just an example of where this ecosystem could come into play in the enterprise to improve productivity. If Dell can sell this concept with already developed verticals from NVIDIA, they will sell a ton of devices for sure, and the declining PC market could see a temporary uplift for the next couple of years. It's intriguing how close Jensen seems to be to Dell. Here's what he said last month. This partnership between us is going to be the first and the largest generative AI go-to-market in history. Only Dell has the ability to build compute networking storage, integrated with incredible software. Whether you like it to be air-cooled or liquid-cooled, bring it to your company, help you stand it up with professional services and with your IT department, develop new applications that you can deploy. There definitely seems to be good synergy between Dell's ability to deploy machines, both in the data center and, and the client space, and NVIDIA's AI software stack and their entry into the PC market as a complete platform. So I'd expect Dell to be one of NVIDIA's premier partners next year, if not even an exclusive OEM partner, seeing as no other duo will have an end-to-end -end AI strategy that covers every step of the process. Now it's beyond the enterprise and into to the consumer level that really interests me, and I imagine you also. Are PC enthusiasts the target audience for an NVIDIA ARM-based PC? For a first generation, I honestly doubt it. Although a lot of games already have decent support for ARM, we're far from a wide enough support base through emulation, let alone native support, then I think it will be years until PC enthusiasts can ditch the old x86 towers in favor of an all NVIDIA PC. I mean, even Apple with their infinite resources haven't gotten PC gaming right on their ecosystem, but I think there's a real chance that the day will come when gamers will transition to ARM devices, and an all NVIDIA gaming PC could be enticing if the value and the performance are there, and especially if it has exclusive features. Perhaps in a couple of years we'll have a better idea of the DIY market's interest in such a move. But as for this first gen, I think it really will be enterprise only. The transition has to start somewhere after all. Now one market that I think remains untapped is the older console users. So gamers in their 30s and 40s who want to come home and play games but don't want to deal with a PC. They associate PCs with work and the console experience is simple and stressful free by contrast. I think Nvidia could win some of those consumers if they release a mini PC console-like device that can run games natively when there's support for them or through their streaming service, GeForce Now, when there's no ARM support. This would make little sense for our niche, PC enthusiasts, but for a huge portion of the population who are more comfortable with a dumbed-down console experience, such a device can make a lot of sense, especially if Nvidia can launch it with a service similar to Microsoft's Game Pass. Console users probably won't be too bothered with games being streamed and might not even be able to tell the difference in terms of graphics and latency. So if the user interface is simple to use, the graphics are better than the PS5 and the price is right, and possibly with the inclusion of GeForce Now, that could be a whole new market for Nvidia's ARM-based PCs. The Nvidia Shield Android TV already serves as the baseline for what this model could look like, but of course with more powerful hardware. I think an all NVIDIA device for say $300 to $500 would be a console killer, especially as more and more console exclusives are launching on PC these days. If NVIDIA pulls something like that off, then I would say Microsoft and Sony's console business would have its days numbered, with the exception of a few more conservative markets like Japan and a few European countries. 
So from enterprise all the way down to consumer, there are several ways in which I think Nvidia can completely disrupt the PC market and drive sales for them and their close partners, and perhaps even create a whole new hybrid PC console market. The question remains though, will this AI gold rush present itself as enticing for businesses and consumers as the advent of the internet, or the introduction of multimedia capabilities for PCs, or the transition from bulky notebooks to slim and large light touchscreen laptops to the point of accelerating a PC refresh that bends the natural curve for purchases like those events did? I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. And since you're down there sharing your thoughts, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I have a review of a cool machine dropping here on the channel in the next few days. Thanks for watching and until the next one.